bestbookbits.com presents Bounce, The Myth of Talent and the Power of Practice by Matthew Side. Published in 2010 and weighing 320 pages. Two-time Olympian and sports writer and broadcaster, Matthew Side draws on the latest in neuroscience and psychology to uncover the secrets of our top athletes and introduce us to an extraordinary cast of characters including the East German athlete who became a man and her husband, and the three Hungarian sisters who are all chess grandmasters. Bounce is crammed with fascinating stories and statistics, looking at controversial questions such as whether talent is more important than practice, drugs in sport and life, and whether black people really are faster runners. The Mind Bend in Bounce is a must-read for the hardened sports nut or brand new convert. The written summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of Bounce. In a nutshell, Matthew Side was the three times Commonwealth table tennis champion. He wanted to explore what makes people successful in sport and also in life. We tend to assign words like genius, naturally gifted, and prodigy to people who achieve success. Yet Side claims that excellence is primarily down to sustained purposeful practice. This cultural belief in giftedness creates problems at both ends of the scale. First, the gifted believe that therefore do not need to work hard at something and so squander their ability. And second, the non-gifted do not believe they have the talent and therefore do not bother to make the effort. His book asserts that with effort comes excellence, with effort comes excellence, and through excellence often comes success. Thus, we should praise effort, not talent. Key factors that drive excellence and success. 10,000 hours of purposeful practice. Syed supports Gladwell's assertion that a major component of success is many hours of sustained practice. Many hours of sustained practice. 10,000 hours equals 2.7 hours a day for 10 years. The practice itself needs to be purposeful with high standards and quality feedback. Ericsson 1991 looked at violinists at the Music Academy in West Berlin. They were assessed into three groups, from the most able to the least able. The only difference was the number of hours they had practiced, 10,000 hours, 8,000 hours, and 6,000 hours. And the rule was unbroken. All 10,000 hour students were in the top category, and nor were there any 6,000-hour students in the top category. They concluded the difference between expert performance and normal adults reflect a lifelong persistence of deliberate effort to improve performance. Another study of British musicians found that the high achievers learn no faster than others per hour. They merely did more hours. This finding has been validated in many sports, e.g. tennis. Agassi hit a million balls a year. Even so-called child prodigies such as Mozart put in the hours. He had clocked up 3,500 hours by the time he was six and had studied his art for 18 years before he wrote his piano consort number nine at the age of 21. Tiger Woods started when he was two years old. Serena Williams started playing at three, her sister at four. Every now and then, there is a new technique that dramatically lifts performance levels, e.g. the Frosby flop. But these are not sudden sparks of creative inspiration. They actually come from deep, sustained immersion in purposeful practice. Picasso, Michelangelo, and research among poets have all identified their creative inspiration came from hours upon hours of dedicated practice. A mindset of hard work, innate talent versus perseverance. Duke, 1978, 330 students, 11 and 12 year olds, given a questionnaire to assess their beliefs about talent, then categorized into two groups, those with a fixed view of talent, i.e. it's innate, and the other who saw talent as something that could be developed. They were then all given IQ test, with the questions getting significantly harder. Those with a fixed view on talent tend to give up sooner as they label themselves as not clever enough. Hence, no amount of hard work would compensate. Dweck conducted another experiment later, where she took 400 11-year-olds and gave them a series of simple puzzles. 
Afterwards, she randomly divided them into two groups. To the first, she praised her intelligence. You must be really smart. The other half, she praised their effort. You must have worked really hard. After the first test, they were given the choice to take an easy or hard test. Only one third of the smart kids elected for the hard test, while 90% of the effort kids took the hard test. Finally, everyone had to do one extra test where Dweck found the effort kids improved their score by 30% and the smart kids decreased their average score by 20%. Thus, we need to be very careful when we set people up as being innately talented as it holds people back from trying as they fear being found out and hence will reduce their long-term performance. Pushing well past the comfort zone. Excellence comes from consistently stretching to reach a much higher goal. Excellence comes from consistently stretching to reach a much higher goal, often a goal that only the coach or manager thinks is possible. Thus, training with and being with the best is critical to drive up performance and mindset. Tiger Woods used to push his practice balls into the stand to deliberately make it more difficult. One of the reasons Brazil is so successful at soccer is because most of the footballers played futsal. The smaller, heavier ball demands greater precision and encourages more frequent passing. Expectations. Performance often rises or reduces to the level of expectations put upon them. Belief. Belief is a critical element to success. Often it's the coach or mentor who has a greater belief than the individual. But eventually the performer needs to develop it as well. Belief is also critical not only in driving long-term motivation, but also for the event itself. Jonathan Edwards, when he won gold in the triple jump at the Sydney Games, had a belief in the will of God. This allowed him to relax and to perform at an unconscious level of mastery. Choking is when the conscious brain tries to take control of performance. Unfortunately, most tasks are too complex for the conscious mind to handle. Others find their belief elsewhere, which can spread to quirky, irrational, superstitious rituals. Doubt is a dangerous virus that quickly spreads and paralyzes, so you need to filter out negative thoughts and instead focus on many previous positive reference experiences. Arison Wengar remarked, To perform at your maximum, you have to teach yourself to believe with an intensity that goes way beyond logical justification. No top performer has lacked this capacity for irrational optimism. Be where the great are. Great players tend to come together in one place. Thus, it's key to be in the places where they are. For example, the city of Reading produced more outstanding table tennis players than the rest of the country put together. Sparatek, a small impoverished area in Moscow, generated more top 20 women tennis players than the whole of America. Quality feedback. Feedback is key to learning. Feedback is key to learning. If you don't know what you're doing wrong, you can never know what you're doing right. Learning from failure. Paradoxically, failure is a key part of excellence. Successful performers have a positive attitude to failure. For example, Shizuka Arakawa, one of Japan's greatest ice skaters, fell over more than 20,000 times in her progression to become the 2006 Olympic champion. Environmental shapes. Environmental factors can help shape or destroy the potential. Desmond Douglas, aka Speedy Gonzalez, played table tennis in such a small room he was forced to play close to the table. This shaped him into becoming the fastest reacting player. He had learned to encode the micro movements involved in fast play. The high altitude Nandi area in Kenya had produced more marathon runners than anywhere else in the world. This area is so poor that children would regularly run to school up to 20 kilometers away. The expansive capacity of the brain. Experiments have shown that the brain under constant stimulation can expand and develop. Purposeful practice builds new neural pathways. Purposeful practice builds new neural pathways. The brain is able to make sense of this wealth of data. 
accumulated over time and encoded into useful information that then drives precise, refined action of the elite sports person. For example, this seemingly super sharp reaction time of various ball sports is an illusion. Experiments have shown that often these top sports people are no faster in standard tests than other people. The player is able to detect minute, subtle movements in the bowler, server's arm, and shoulder, which form years and years of practice, has led them to read the direction of the ball, serve, before the ball has even been played. It's this practice that has created unconscious patterns and distinctions not open to the lesser trained. Gretzky's A U.S. Hockey Player Gift is foreseen amid the mayhem Gretzky can discern the game's underlying pattern and flow and anticipate what's going to happen faster and in more detail than anyone else. The same is found in experts in many fields of decision making. They instinctively know, based on years of practice and an ability to pick up often unconsciously minute distinctions and patterns that the rest of us are blind to. Serendipity, luck and opportunity. Often, it's a series of lucky events and circumstances, usually outside of one's consciousness and control, that conspire to make it possible for success. So maybe a bit more humility in one's success would be more appropriate. Genetic makeup is not found to be the primary reason for sporting success, because blacks are perceived to be better at sport, then they are more likely to be picked up and hence given more opportunity to excel. And the principle is reversed in business. And that's a wrap on Bounce by Matthew Side. Subscribe to our channel for future summaries and check out our website, bestbookbits.com, for the written summary and more. To buy the book, use the website store where you'll find this book and hundreds more to browse and purchase. Thanks for watching and I hope you learned a thing or two about Bounce. Have yourself an amazing day.